Hey book buddies, I'm Eric from Lonesome Reader. I'm here with another book prize video today and I think the interesting thing about surveying a number of different book prizes is that sometimes you'll see certain titles popping up again and again and it makes you think because uh, some people who question the validity of book prizes might say the authors who get nominated for a prize are just the subjective opinion of a small group of judges and that's true. But if you look at a range of book prizes with entirely different groups of judges who come to similar conclusions about what books are prize worthy, it makes you think there must be something to this book. Um, or is there? <laughs> More on that in a minute. But that's why I thought it would be interesting to make this video about this year's Swansea University International Dylan Thomas Prize. Not heard of this prize before? As you might suspect, it's a prize that honors Welsh writer and poet Dylan Thomas, who's famous for the poem Do Not Go Gently Into That Good Night, who died in 1953 at the very young age of 39. So this is a prize meant to celebrate and encourage young authors. It's open to writers aged 39 years and younger, but it's not limited to any particular format. It considers uh, fiction written in English in all different forms from novels to short stories to plays to drama. The prize was first launched in 2006 and some past winners and two books that I think are so excellent are Max Porter's uh, darkly poetic Grief is the Thing with Feathers and also Joshua Ferris's uh, darkly humorous uh, To Rise Again at a Decent Hour. Now this year some authors that were on the long list for the prize but didn't make it to the short list are um, Aobami Adebayu for her novel Stay With Me, which I loved so much and which was on the Bailey's Prize shortlist last year. Mina Kandasami for her novel When I Hit You, uh, which was one of my favorite novels that I read last year and which is on this year's Women's Prize shortlist. And Ellie Williams for her short story collection Atrib, uh, which won this year's Republic of Consciousness Prize. I just started reading these stories the other day and they're so good. Uh, but these books didn't actually make it to the shortlist for this year's prize. Uh, so this is the shortlist. I'll just go through and talk through the books briefly. There's Keiu Chinganyi for his poetry collection Kumakanda, which I read in December. There's some really powerful poems in here about national identity and masculinity and music. Carmen Maria Machado for her book of short stories her Body and Other Parties, which I read in February. These stories are so creative and varied. Some are really supernatural and surreal in tone, and others are much more realistic, like there's one short story about a group of sisters that undergo um, weight reduction surgery. Some stories play with narrative form, like there's one called Especially Heinous, which is a existentialist supernatural cop drama and it gives a series of episode summaries that grow increasingly bizarre. Wendelin Riley for First Love. This is a very dark, some say comic, a uh, darkly comic or a comically dark uh, short novel about a very dysfunctional marriage and uh, the miserable people who reside within that marriage. And in this relationship, there is very little love. Sally Rooney for her debut novel, Conversations with Friends. Uh, Rooney won the Sunday Times Young Writer of the Year Award last year, and I read this in November. And this is a book that really crept up on me for the way it describes the complicated relationship between a group of young people and their miscommunications and the way they hide their feelings of isolation and loneliness. Emily Ruskovich for her debut novel, Idaho. This is the only book on the shortlist that I haven't read yet. I know Mercedes was a big fan of this book. Uh, this is a story told from multiple perspectives about a family that's broken apart by a shocking event. And finally, there is Gabriel Talent for his debut novel, My Absolute Darling. 
and I read this novel last August and uh, I'm so glad it's getting prize attention because I think it is such an unusual novel and it's one that I feel like I haven't entirely made up my mind about yet uh, so I'll be really eager to discuss this with some other people. It's about a highly capable but very isolated girl who lives with her cerebral uh, but very dangerous father uh, who's a survivalist. Uh, the writing is so beautiful and it is such a powerful story. So those are the six authors on the shortlist and I've written a lot about the five books on this list that I have read. Um, so if you want to know more of my thoughts about any of them, I'll put links to my full reviews in the description below. I think it's so interesting how this prize has recognized a mixture of authors, um, some of whom feel like have already been lauded in a number of different prizes and others whose books feel like they haven't got quite as much attention. Of course, the fly in the ointment for me is First Love. I've lost track of how many awards this book has been nominated for. Uh, if you've watched my channel before, uh, you know my thoughts about this book. I don't need to bash it again. Maybe it's not the book. Maybe it's just me and I just had a bad reading experience or it's just not the right book for me. Uh, plenty of people have loved it. And I would say, when I went to readings for the authors shortlisted for the Goldsmiths Prize last year, um, it was really interesting hearing Gwendolyn Riley read because of the reaction of the audience. She read a passage where the husband is insulting the wife in a way which is kind of comic at first and then it becomes much darker and more disturbing and so I could hear in the audience how they were sort of laughing appreciatively at first and then quietly like simmered down into discomfort. And it's really interesting when writing has the power to make us question what's playfully mocking and what's cruelly abusive and to what degree we're being empathetic or voyeuristic. So I like the way that book prizes make me reconsider my feelings about what I've read and they might change my opinions uh, about what I've read or they might just firm up my opinions about how I feel about a book. And I also think it's really interesting how some books which uh, came close to winning or actually won some other book prizes um, that were on this prize's lawn list have been passed over in favor of some debut authors which haven't been recognized as much. Uh, so, but what do you think? Do you become much more aware of books when they've been nominated or win multiple prizes? Uh, or do you think the publishing industry is skewed to favor certain books over others? Do you have an infectious excitement about book prizes like Peg the Book Prize Addict and just enjoy the fun and drama of it all? Comment below. And what do you think of the Dylan Thomas Prize shortlist? Uh, have you read any of these books? Would you root for one to win over another? Um, I think if I were a judge, I would find it really difficult. I'd probably, uh, it would, for me, it would probably be between um, Her Body and Other Parties and My Absolute Darling, but I'd have to have a long think about it and discussion about it. Uh, but uh, I'll, of course, I also have to read Idaho. The winner will be announced on May 10th, and if you want to know more about the prize, I'll put a link in the description below. So that's all there is for today, but thank you for watching, and I'll speak to you again soon. Happy reading, everyone!